Hey folks, back with another video. Let's dive into what stories got my attention today. Starting with Yemen, heavy fighting in the central Yemeni province of Marib has left at least 26 fighters killed, according to a report from pro-Saudi officials. They say 22 Houthis and four soldiers were slain in the fighting over the last 24 hours. The Houthis didn't report specifics on casualties, but did say they had been hit by 12 Saudi airstrikes in the same period. The government did not mention the airstrikes, though this is common tactic for the Saudis. Marib has long been considered a, considered a target in the Yemen war, as after the Saudi-led invasion force took Aden and failed to advance north to Sana'a. They tried to contest Marib as an alternative way to alternative way of reaching the capital. Now, as the war goes on, the reality that the war has entered a stalemate is hard to deny, making peace so far seem more palatable for all sides. Of course, it is tragic to see that uh, so many had to suffer before people who have power will eventually do the right thing. Let's just see how long all the parties involved will take to make a deal to end this, in my opinion, needless war. Moving over to Ethiopia, as fighting in the Tigray region continues, remote uh, reports have come out that the Tig that the Ethiopian government is ethnically profiling Tigrays, including in Addis Ababa, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michelle Bachelet, said on Wednesday, quote, We have reports that particularly and that particularly areas surrounding towns like Mekele, Sherero, Aksum, Abiyadi, and the borders between the Amhara and Tigray regions. Fighting continues between federal forces and the TPLF and affiliated militias on both sides, end quote, Bachelet told a news conference in Geneva. Quote, there is an urgent need for independent monitoring of the human rights situation in Tigray region. All necessary measures to protect civilians and accountability for violation, end quote. Now, any reports or news from Ethiopia are hard to verify due to the government's blocking telecommunication network. So, it is important to take all the news with a grain of salt. However, such a situation is, in my opinion, a breeding ground for having a, let's just say, being doubtful on the news from the government side more than the rebel side. Now, I will continue to keep an eye on the situation in Ethiopia. Moving on to Armenia, thousands of protesters converged on the parliament building in, uh, in Armenia's capital Wednesday to push for the resignation of the ex-Soviet nation's prime minister over his handling of the fighting with the Azerbaijani, with Azerbaijan over Nagorno-Karabakh. Nikol Pashinyan, opponents, uh, Nikol Pashinyan's opponent, Arangri, had a peace deal that ended the six weeks of fighting over the separatist region but saw Azerbaijan take over wide areas that have been controlled by Armenian forces for more than a quarter century. Armenia's opposition parties gave Pashinyan an ultimatum to resign by Tuesday but he has ignored the demand, defending the peace deal as a bitter but necessary move that prevent that prevented Azerbaijan from overrunning the entire Nagorno-Karabakh region. About 15,000 protesters marched marched through downtown Yerevan to the parliament building, chanting "Quote Nico, go away." End quote. The opposition has been pushing for Pashinyan's resignation since the Russia brokered peace deal took ef effect on uh, November 10th. Protests have grown over the past days with demonstrators blocking traffic in various sections of the capital and also rallying in other cities. The Armenian Apostolic, Apostolic Church and all three of the country's former presidents have joined the demand for Pashinyan to step down. Now, as of yet, any movement against the PM 
is not likely to change the standing of the deal. I believe this deal will continue no matter wh whether the Prime Minister stays or leaves. Moving on to Iran. Iranian authorities have arrested several people suspected of being involved in the recent assassination of Iran's top nuclear scientist and advisor to the Iranian parliament speaker has said. Hossein Amir Abdullahian on Wednesday said, on, said an unidentified number of suspects had been taken into custody over the killing of Mohsen Fakhrizadeh, who was gunned down outside of Tehran last month. On Sunday, the deputy commander of the, Royal, uh, of the Revolutionary Guard, Rear Admiral Ali Fadavi, told local media that a satellite-controlled machine gun with quote-unquote artificial intelligence was used in Fakhrizadeh's assassination. Fakhrizadeh was driving on a highway outside Iran's capital Tehran with a security detail of 11 guards on 27 November, November when the machine gun quote-unquote zoomed in. On his face and fired 13 rounds. Fadavi said at the time. Now I believe Iran is doing everything to keep the people's nerves calm over the assassination and they're also trying to show the Iranian people that they are doing something. As far as the justice system is concerned my opinion is it's effectively a kangaroo court. But I believe the bigger strategy that the Iranian government is looking at is the incoming presidency of Joe Biden in the U.S. Moving on to Taiwan. The U.S. President Donald Trump's administration on Monday announced that it had approved a $280 million arms sale package to Taiwan with local experts saying the sale would upgrade military telecommunications and stimulate industrial development. The package includes a field information communication system consisting of 154 communication nodes, 24 communication relays and a network management system, the U.S. Defense Security Cooperation Agency said in a press release. It also involves verification testing, personal training and training equipment, an initial repair and return program, technical and logistics support services, and contractor-provided training, it said. The proposed sale is designed to provide mobile and secure communication, the agency said, adding that it has notified the U.S. Congress as required. The principal contractor is currently unknown due to a pending open competition for selection, it said. Taipei, wel Taipei welcomed the potential sale with the presidential office thanking the U.S. for its sixth arms sale this year and the 11th by the Trump administration. The sale once again highlights the U.S. government's substantive actions to fulfill its security commitments under the U.S.-Taiwan Relations Act and the quote-unquote six assurances and will further strengthen the Taiwanese military's strategic and defense needs. Presidential Office spokesman Xavier Chang said in the statement. Now, I think arming our allies is a good thing, especially as it builds a credible deterrence, especially against the Chinese Communist Party. But I do believe it is time that other nations deal with their problems on their own and... I believe we have enough problems to take care of in our own country. However, the situation that is Beijing's regime is something that requires, I believe, a proper discussion in the West as to what exactly our duty should be and what are the limitations of what we can do in that situation. Well. And that's it for this video. If you like the video, then hit that like button and hit that subscribe button for future updates. Write in the comment sections your thoughts, criticisms and anything I might have missed. And as usual, all the sources to the story are in the description box below. And I will see you in the next video.